Good afternoon, folks. I uh, want to thank everyone for joining the webinar this afternoon. Um, we're going to spend the next few, a um, uh, little bit of time talking about and going through um, the um, webinar series that we have set up. And we're going to be talking about how to restore consumer confidence and then give some practical examples of some things you can do proactively to get um, customers back into your establishments. So quick introduction, I'm Bob Gibson. I'm the Chief Revenue Officer at Jolt. Um, I've been in the industry for a little over 30 years. I've done most things in the restaurant business. I've been a dishwasher, a cook, chef, a restaurant owner, and on the technology side, I've done everything from installing POS systems um, to cabling, to inventory, labor management, and now digital food safety and uh, task management under my umbrella. Uh, with me today is CJ Lewis, and I'll let CJ introduce himself. Thanks, Bob. Grateful to be here with everyone. Excited to present what we have for you today. And uh, uh, as Bob mentioned, I'm a co-founder of Jolt. Been with uh, the company now eight years. Prior to that, was a server at a restaurant. So been in uh, the industry for 10 plus years and excited to share some thoughts we have about how to create consumer confidence. Thanks, CJ. Uh, a few housekeeping items to uh, attend to first. Uh, first, all lines will be muted due to the number of attendees we have today. Um, please use the Q&A tab to submit your questions at the bottom of the screen. We'll have dedicated time for Q&A at the end of the presentation. And then um, just a couple other notes, we will be conducting a survey halfway through and we'll review the re results at the end of the presentation. A Little bit about Jolt. Jolt is the premier global digital food safety and task management software in the world. We have a strong domestic and global footprint and are seeing strong demand for our product uh, across the globe. In addition to digital food safety and task management, our suite of products also includes a robust time and attendance module with full labor scheduling, food labeling, proactive alert monitoring, monitoring, as well as performance measurement. Today, we're gonna to talk a little bit about, um, and I'm sorry, some of the brands that we do business with um, uh, across our portfolio. Um, so today, we're gonna to talk about how the coronavirus has impacted hospitality. Uh, we're gonna give some practical examples of what you can do um, to proactively uh, announce what you're doing to, to make your establishment safe and to get consumers back on board. As with all predictive analysis, this is best guess based upon the data available with current sources. Uh, data and analysis is constantly changing and as it does, we will adapt our model. This presentation is based upon research from Technomics, Data Essentials, and just a side note, Data Essentials today came out with an updated um, analysis, which is fascinating and highly recommend that you reach out and take a look at it. Nation's Restaurant News, IFBTA and RTN, as well as multiple webinars from industry experts, publications, and analysis from the Wall Street Journal, CNBC, and other industry sources. So some of what we're seeing uh, based upon the research we've done. Uh, first, it's just from a market research stat. Um, Currently today, uh, between quick serve and fast casual, 75% of the consumer spend is in those two uh, markets, um, both of which we expect to continue to grow, grow um, which we see as really a highlight of what's to come as we look over the next 12 months. When, when we're looking at the population as a whole, one of the common themes that a uh, has been out there and hasn't actually changed in the last uh, couple of months is that two-thirds of the population will avoid dine-in restaurants in the next two months. Um, basically, 66% of the population is nervous about dine-in and continues to be um, as they're not comfortable enough to go back into the restaurants. If we look at that, 52% of that group has identified a lack of notification of sanitization and safety precautions as one of the reasons for preventing them from coming back. And then 75% have identified safety as the primary issue preventing them from dining in. 
So it's a pretty large segment of the market currently today that really are concerned about the safety within establishments before they'll return back to dine-in. If we look at the impact on the industry as a whole, um, there's a few uh, items that uh, we're gonna point out uh, in this presentation. And the first one is really something that I think uh, folks in general need to really take seriously. And that's the public shaming. Um, we see this kind of across the board and in a little bit, I'll give you a couple examples, but the public shaming of companies by government and um, entities is something that's a major risk we think for uh, the hospitality industry. Another trend that we're seeing is the drop in immigration. Um, as jobs dry up, um, this is gonna impact labor costs. Uh, and when they do reopen, this is a risk that folks just need to uh, think about in the back of their minds. The next thing which, which we're seeing is the possible end of the golden age of restaurants. Over the last three years or so, and Technomics and Data Central both have some really interesting stats on this. Um, if you look at the growth from the last uh, 2009, when the last time we had a recession through now, food kind of took on a uh, art form and a lot of um, uh, restaurants kind of opened uh, around that concept. And right now, the trend we're seeing um, is a lot of those folks are having a real struggle um, reopening uh, and maintaining um, any kind of revenue to stay open. We also think that city-based restaurants will start to move out to the suburbs. We'll see a movement uh, from cities to the burbs. Um, and, and part of that will then result in cities experiencing an empty uh, space syndrome. Once those spaces close and other businesses around that, it could possibly have an effect on uh, the downtown city locations. One of the other items that is happening across the board is if you look at um, the economy today, we're, we're, we were already heading this way, but this certainly has accelerated it. We're moving to a delivery economy, um, and that delivery economy will spawn some uh, innovation. We do think autonomous vehicles and delivery mechanisms will come into play, but we know in the short term, that's not actually uh, available yet. So in the, in the short term, um, we, we believe that part of the workforce will move to uh, contract workers. So if you look at a company um, such as Instacart, um, they hired over 30,000 workers in the last 60 days, um, and they just actually surpassed uh, Walmart. Uh, from a, a delivery standpoint. Um, so we think that's going to continue. Um, we also believe that long-term American cities will actually become a little more affordable for folks as we see that uh, urban sprawl. And this is going to sound a little bit weird, but history always repeats itself. So if you look at the Sears and Roebuck economy of the late 1890s, it will give you a little bit of a sense of what we're looking at today, and we'll continue to see that grow into the market. Some of the restaurant specific impacts, um, we do believe there'll be a certification of some sort, um, government mandated uh, or industry mandated on safety. It, it'll be like a serve safe um, and it could be a key part of a brand strategy. We'd really recommend thinking about this from a marketing standpoint and how do you get your messaging out there of what you're doing. Onboarding and training will be a key challenge as restaurants, as um, uh, brands grow. Uh, with the major displacement of the workforce right now, um, those folks coming back will in general not come back to the same places they left. Um, so how to get the brand standards or how to get your messaging out there and how you onboard those folks will be a challenge we think the restaurant industry is going to face. Um, eating at home has kind of returned to the norm of 20, 30 years ago. Um, this has kind of resulted in what we're calling the grocerant. Um, this is a growing trend where grocers are taking up and creating a second sales channel for themselves as a restaurant delivery curbside and pickup. We think that trend is going to continue. And the other thing that, um, that seems to be a trend that we're, we're seeing is that food that travels is key. This is where, you know, food for art will become a very um, challenging aspect. Um, as you get into kind of more takeout, delivery, and um, pickup. We also think that make your own plate, self-service, and buffet type locations are gonna really be challenged during this time frame. 
Um, so just something to keep in the back of your mind is something uh, how to um, uh, plan for that to happen. Ghost kitchens were already starting to come on board, but with uh, what we've seen over the last 60, 90 days, uh, we do predict a pretty dramatic growth in ghost kitchens um, and off premise in, premise in general, we think will uh, we'll go pretty uh, quickly. Um, we do believe in increased investment in technology um, and because we think QSR is going to do really well, uh, technologies around drive-through, uh, throughput, um, and then uh, alcohol delivery will be important. Um, as uh, cities have um, started to allow and towns have allowed uh, alcohol delivery, technologies around how to ensure that it's being done safely, we think will um, start coming into play. One thing to keep in the back of your mind is that there will be an increase in sales tax, property tax, use fees, et cetera, as folks look to recoup that lost revenue that they've seen over the last 60, 90 days. So from the consumer standpoint, we think one of the things that the consumers are going to do is we're going to see a, a dramatic, and we already have seen a dramatic increase in digital. Um, and delivery versus in-person. Um, another trend that we're seeing is a move to more grocery and C-store. Um, if you look at um, the, the folks that are really prospering during this time frame, uh, grocery and C-store have, have really um, come through this pretty well. Uh, we expect that trend to continue. Um, there's going to be, from the consumer standpoint, a little more focus on the supply chain. Where, where is my food coming from? How is it certified as safe? And that has already been in play, but we expect that to increase uh, over the coming year. Um, consumers in general will reward brands that have showed compassion and help versus those that have, that have not. And um, we, we do recognize that the increase in unemployment uh, will have an effect on disposable income, which will result in less spend. As we look at the consumer, we also uh, believe that return to dining and restaurants, to do that, social distancing will be very important. Washing hands and, and publicizing that, we think will be a, a key component. Um, clean surfaces, et cetera, and how you present that data to the consumer, which CJ will talk a little bit about uh, down the road. Uh, we think is going to be a very important part about reestablishing that consumer confidence. The other impacts uh, from the hospitality standpoint, um, if we look at uh, the brands that are doing really well today and the large brands that specifically have strong balance sheets, we think those folks will prosper and we think there's a very good um, possibility that they'll also increase their footprint by picking up um, key locations and increasing their, their overall footprint. We think that'll happen in the next 12 to 18 months. I think we've started to see a little bit this al of this already in the marketplace. We strongly believe that consumer confidence will be the key to brands getting back to business. Um, we'll talk a little bit about trust, transparency, and safety, but we do believe it's a key brand strategy moving forward and that you have to think about how you're gonna solve that and how you're going to convey that to the consumer. Um, we believe there'll be government regulations that'll come out of this. Now, we're seeing some of it already, especially around how to open and some of the requirements, but we think those will uh, turn into um, certain regulations, um, especially around employee and customer safety. So we're on the uh, lookout for what's coming, and we're trying to keep our, our ear to the pavement to see if and when uh, those are and what those will look like so we can quickly adapt. We talked a little bit about this already, but onboarding and training is going to be a, a key challenge folks will um, will um, will have to uh, address. And then the other thing that we're nervous about is that we we think there may be a second round of closings that'll come. One of the challenges, I think, for restaurateurs and certainly for all of you um, is that if you can only open with 25 or 50 percent capacity, you still have uh, fixed costs that you have to cover. Um, and uh, doing that and not being able to maximize revenue uh, could have a negative impact on folks. Employee safety, getting your employees back to work 
is just as important as consumer safety. So making sure that you have a safe environment for your employees is going to be a key part about reopening. And then one thing just to think about, and certainly we're uh, thinking about as well, with the large available labor pool, um, there's certainly opportunities uh, for employees who, as you onboard, uh, to bring folks back on. Brand integrity is going to be key uh, and taking steps to be proactive uh, to, to either avoid public shaming or to be able to react to it, we think is going to be a key component moving forward. And then lastly, we do believe that QSR for at least the next 12 months uh, will dominate and grow into the marketplace. Um, QSR, uh, really speed of service, throughput is a key component of that. And um, moving um, uh, technology and um, uh, processes around that will be part of um, what we think will be the recovery process. And what we just wanted to do is give you a couple examples. Um, and these were early on, uh, these were April 11th and April 9th, but just two examples of, of how this uh, could affect you. The first one is from a, a consumer um, on April 11th. And you know, basically she was out at a restaurant, um, the um, uh, representative from the restaurant didn't have a mask on. And um, she immediately went on social media, posted it. And, um, you know, for this particular restaurant, they took um, certainly a negative um, impact from that. And then the second example is, is not as uh, daunting for the restaurant, but this is someone looking to go to a restaurant and their post is all about safety. So they're looking for a hamburger joint and they wanna make sure that uh, wherever they're going, the, con the uh, employees are wearing masks and gloves and that the, the establishment is safe. This is, this is some of what we're seeing in the, in the marketplace. So just something to be cognizant of is that folks pretty quickly respond and you wanna just make sure that, that you've got um, proactively in place and that this is something folks are looking for before they come up back to um, uh, dine in. Um, also in the government climate, um, you know, we've, we've seen the regulations for high risk, you know, the red, the yellow, um, orange and green, and then the difference criteria um, as this kind of changes. As you're looking at responding to this and you're looking at um, products from a technology standpoint, um, and one of the things we do with Jolt is because it's an enterprise-based system, you can quickly adapt those requirements into a task and then distribute it throughout your organization. So just in general, as you look at tools to help you, um, those are some of the important factors that you wanna think about because you wanna be able to move quickly based upon changes that happen within the marketplace. Um, and then I'm gonna end with a couple of quotes before I, I turn it over to CJ. Bill Gates certainly has been ahead of the, the virus scare for quite a while. Um, but uh, one of the things that um, we took away from a, a presentation Bill did was that even if governments lift shelter in place orders and businesses reopen their doors, humans have a natural aversion to exposing themselves to disease. And then from a couple of industry experts, Al Paris, um, innovator and a restaurateur, um, you know, basically safety is the new hospitality. Um, and what he's saying is basically people need to have a safe working environment and feel safe to uh, either come back to work or also uh, to reestablish and revisit your restaurants. And then Robert Irvine has been really outspoken on this. He just did a um, uh, 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 interview uh, two days ago with some uh, really interesting quotes in it. Highly recommend you, you Google it. Uh, but this is one he did a little while ago with the CTO from Yum. And um, his um, basic message is trust, transparency, and technology will be required to get customers back. And, and we do believe based upon all of the data we're looking at and the stats, that that's a very true statement and something that we all have to be cognizant of. And with that, I'm gonna pause and uh, we're gonna do a survey and uh, Brandon's gonna kick it out and uh, we're gonna ask you to um, uh, take a look and see if you strongly agree or disagree with uh, what we've presented so far. And if you could take a second and um, and answer that, and we'll give a, a 
a 30 second pause to let folks do that and then we'll move on. Yeah, thanks, Bob. That, uh, so that poll is open for you guys right now to go ahead and submit an answer for. And like you said, we'll keep it open for just a few seconds here or, or until everyone has submitted a response. Great, thanks, Brandon. Uh, with that, I'm gonna turn it now over to CJ and CJ is gonna talk about um, how to create, uh, how technology creates trust and how Dilt can help you with that. Take it away, CJ. Thank you, Bob. And once again, thanks everyone for uh, participating. So there's four pillars on this topic I wanna focus on that you can see here. The first one being digital checklists, which then leads to digital dashboards, and then third, contactless menus, and fourth, wellness checks. And kind of to a quick summarization, in Bob's data, really the thing we're talking about and the problem we're trying to solve is what he said by two thirds of consumers in the next couple of months are not gonna to wanna to go into dine-in. And you know, more than 50% of the reason why is because they're not confident or they don't have trust in what's happening in the restaurant as far as cleanliness and safety. And so the solutions we have for you today are to combat that very thing is, is how can you take what you're doing in your business and, and get credit for it and actually publish that to the consumer so that they have that confidence. And it's through that type of trust and transparency and the use of technology that will really help win consumers back. So that's kind of the theme of my message here and uh, excited to share these four ideas with you. So the first one is digital checklist. Now there's two parts to this piece. The first one is how digital checklists create confidence and trust for the actual business itself, for the owners, for managers, and for employees. And then the second part is how you translate that to the consumer. So I'm first gonna focus on why you should go digital in the first place. Because the industry leader to date is still paper. Um, that was our experience at Jolt. Uh, prior to uh, this company, our, our founder and CEO actually ran and operated a Baskin Robbins location. And he used paper. And one of the stories I, I like, actually like to tell highlights how inefficient paper really is and how it's not a system and how Jolt was born because of uh, some of these experiences. And so uh, one of the, the key stories we like to tell was a New Year's Eve night, uh, this was about 10 years ago, uh, Josh was with his family and he dropped them off at the party, hoping to enjoy time with them. But instead he got a phone call from one of his employees. And that message was Josh, the ice cream in the walk-in freezer is soupy. Now that is not what you wanna hear ever, but certainly on a New Year's Eve night, uh, being an ice cream owner, uh, that your ice cream is soupy. And so he immediately went to the, his, his location and the rest of the evening spent time with a person he didn't know fixing the problem. Um, unfortunately, he lost close to $10,000 worth of inventory that night. And now you might be asking, well, what does that have to do with paper? So what Josh then did is he went back to his paper temp logs. And he actually reviewed that entire day and even past days. And without, it was almost near impossible, right? The paper did not notify him or his employees proactively that there had been an issue. The temperatures were taken all correctly, but again, there was just nothing to really highlight the trend that was taking place in the walk-in freezer before it was too late. And so that night, using a paper-based system cost Josh thousands of dollars. And not just that one experience, but I'm sure um, many experience just the inefficiencies of paper, right? Just overall, it's a messy system. Uh, whether it's check lines down an entire page or initials you can't read, um, it, it just does not prove to be a system that actually leads to confidence and trust because there's very low accountability. Now, Josh, and kind of a long story short, he wanted to solve this problem. So he went out in the industry and looked for what other people were doing. But again, everyone else was using a very similar thing, paper checklist, paper-based books. Uh, he went to one business, Domino's, just down the street and asked them what they were using. And same thing, they were using a paper-based book. And in talking to them, they, he was asking them how they felt about it. And their response was, oh, this book? Yeah, I wanna burn this book. And so the feeling that people have about paper is that ultimately it does not, um, it's not a system and it doesn't help build that confidence as a business owner or even employees. And so our first recommendation is to go digital just in general. 
And the biggest value reason why is this first part you see here, and that is going digital truly increases accountability. And when you can increase accountability, you can increase performance and productivity of everyone at the company. And that increase in performance ultimately leads to a better experience for the consumers and can help add uh, just confidence in them. And what we mean by accountability is knowing the exact what, when, who, and how behind every single task that's done in Jolt because of logins and timestamps. So I wanna review some actual uh, examples of how this works and how it can uh, add confidence to, again, the business, but also to the consumer. So my first one here is QR codes that you see for location verification. Now we work with McDonald's, we work with thousands of locations, and one of the items that they have to do every day is called a travel path. In fact, they do it about every hour. And on the travel path are, as the name implies, it's you're traveling around the business, making sure things are cleaned, sanitized. Um, there's one item, check the dumpster, right? Making sure the outside of the facility looks, looks good. And there was at times a struggle to, to actually go and check the dumpster just because things are moving so quickly that that would get missed all the time. So using Jolt, you can actually print off a QR code and then you go stick that out on the dumpster. And so in order to complete that task, you have to take uh, the app, whether it's on a phone or a tablet, and go scan that QR code in order to complete the task. Now, by all means, if you're out there, the chances of them completing the task go, uh, are increased dramatically. Now, how this relates to a consumer is, if you can paste QR codes throughout the restaurant to ensure that employees are going and checking different areas, consumers will see employees going to these areas and completing these tasks, and that visual cue will create confidence in them. Uh, the second example is taking photos. And with photos, you can verify every, um, you can verify a lot. And our example is the sanitization solution, which you see here on the right in these photos. So the first picture you see is, the, is taking a sanitizer strip, te or test strip, excuse me. And how this works is, well, excuse me, let me back up a second. A question a consumer can have is, how do I know if the solution this restaurant or this business is using is actually the right solution, it's going to clean um, and do its proper job. And how you can answer that again is through this picture. So how this works is you take a, a sanitizer test strip, you pour it or you put it into the solution, and then you're able to compare it against um, the, the, the bottle you see there. And what you're hoping for is not too little of solution. You're certainly not looking for too much. You're looking for just the right amount. Uh, a good example is you know, 200 parts per million. And that photo can actually verify that. So Jolt can prompt taking a photo, and then you see that third picture there, an employee actually taking a picture of the carton with the color coding with the actual test strip, verifying that it is actually the right sanitization solution. So this is just one of many examples of how you could verify things using photos. Um, another thing we have is temperature probes, right? Using a Bluetooth, you know, Cooper Atkins or Thermoworks as an example probe, you can actually with your food verify that the, the temperature is taking or taken not from just some manual or even made up temperature, but it was actually taken from a device. And you have the confidence that that was actually done appropriately. And then our, our kind of last example is no one's perfect, things fall through the cracks, but to help make sure things don't fall through the cracks, you can set up things like text and email alerts um, to notify managers and owners. So these are just some examples of how going digital can just add an extra element of accountability and create confidence for consumers. And again, just some of those examples are employees, or excuse me, consumers visually seeing some of these things. Well, how do they actually visually see these things? That leads us to our second recommendation, and that is to the use of digital dashboards. So because you've gone digital, you now have the option of displaying your results to the consumer. And so this digital dashboard concept is summarized in this statement. It's communicating trust and transparency to consumers with a dashboard that displays a store's cleanliness, safety, and sanitization records in real time. So some of the examples include high touch point sanitization, employee hand washing reminders, symptom and temperature checks, personal protective equipment checks, back of house, front of house, drive through and restroom sanitization lists. The, the possibilities are endless. Whatever you feel like is important to display to your consumers, uh, your customers, that you believe will help them create, um, well, 
that communication will help them uh, build that confidence. You now have an option through Jolt to display that through our, our digital dashboards. And just to highlight a few examples of how this works with some of our customers, uh, this first picture and the third picture, you see them displaying their dashboard at the, the cashier stand. So as dine-in begins to reopen, when you go and place your order, you can actually see how they are doing when it comes to cleanliness and different sanitization procedures. The middle picture there is a, a drive through And so these are just examples of where a dashboard can be placed. Um, there's other examples, uh, any sort of screen, uh, both in the back of house or even front of house, other tablets in different positions, um, or even on the web as you do mobile ordering. So hopefully uh, that highlights some examples. Now I've had this conversation with many different people, both small business, large, the largest of enterprises, government officials. And one of my first experiences was with the Pizza Hut group. And as we were kind of going over this concept, because this concept has kind of uh, come to fruition with, with COVID, of course, and this Pizza Hut operator just loved the concept and had the same concern saying, you know, CJ, I'm worried, you know, that people are just not gonna come to the dine-in um, or come to the restaurant because they just don't know the procedures and, and the things we're following. When in reality, we're doing everything we can to, to create that confidence. And so he loved the concept of these dashboards, but his, uh, his the one concern, if you, if you will, that he had was because I'm not perfect, because my employees aren't perfect, I do not wanna air my dirty laundry to the public because that can then lead to what Bob was saying, public shaming. So that was such a great point. And, and that's something we took to heart and made sure that you're only putting your best foot forward. And that's kind of what we have here on the slide. We only show your data when you're at your best, right? Anytime there's things uh, fall through the cracks or mistakes are made, those things are internally placed to be fixed then by employees. Now, if things are missed, we fall back to different safety marketing material, whether from the CDC or even internal communications you wanna to have to employees. And you can route that through your digital dashboard. So that at any point in time, um, you are putting your best foot forward. And so that's something learning through that customer and, and also other conversations we had was a really important aspect of this, of this dashboard concept. The third recommendation we have um, is wellness checks. So certainly a very hot topic, right? Before an employee starts a shift, making sure that they have no symptoms, making sure their temperature is taken, that they have gloves and wearing a mask and all these different things you see here. Now, how do you remember to do all these things? This is the, um, our recommendation of going digital. So in Jolt, you can perform these employee health and wellness checks right within the app. And then that data becomes available in your own internal reports and also can be shown in those dashboards that we're talking about. And the last example is contactless menus. You can take, I gave the example of QR codes and those same QR codes can be multi-purposed, right? You can use them so that when a, you can place them on tabletops, uh, at the entrance of doors, uh, in lines, and consumers can scan those codes and it can take them to a, a digital menu or even the digital dashboards we've been talking about. Now that's, uh, that's just one option. We also have recommendations of you know, laminating menus, making sure they're cleaned after every seating and even printing off simple paper menus um, if that's your only option at this point. But again, our recommendation is the power of going digital because of all the benefits we've been talking about. Um, as far as next steps and getting started, it's extremely easy. For those interested in wanting to learn more, we'd love to work with you and talk with you. Um, and we'll provide some information here at the end. But just high level, Jolt is extremely easy to use. Um, depending on all that you want to use, we have up to zero onboarding or a dedicated customer success manager that can help you. Um, it's, uh, we've simplified the process as much as possible to just streamline getting you up and running very quickly. It works on both iOS and Android. And again, um, easy to use. And so hopefully uh, these four recommendations are something you're interested in. We'd love to talk and uh, take next steps. So uh, we'll now turn it over back to Bob and Brandon to facilitate a, uh, any questions you have. Thanks so much, CJ. That was uh, some great information shared there. And I uh, just want to take some time now for some of the questions that have been submitted. Uh, just a reminder now that you can feel free to submit any questions you have in the chat or, or by using the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen. 
and we'll we'll be happy to address those. Um, a couple that we have here. Um, I'll start off with the with this first one. Uh, this one says, things have to integrate and work well together. How is Jolt integrated into the overall restaurant process? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so the the whole day part and what you're doing, um, Jolt ends up being part of uh, every process within that day. So if you can imagine, you have an opening list um, when the store opens. Um, so you come in, you start um, uh, doing your opening requirements, and then you click off on that and you've completed it. Um, in some cases with uh, time and attendance, you're uh, coming in, punching in and starting your day that way and validating by the schedule that you're actually um, should be working that day. Um, and then depending on what else you're doing within the, the establishment, if you're using uh, digital food safety with uh, temp monitoring, then you're also taking that as you go and completing that and tracking it all the way through. Some folks that actually take that and then they integrate to third parties. So we pull that data uh, from what we're doing and it may go into um, some kind of analytic tool or it just might go to a corporate headquarters where folks are uh, have a dashboard and they're just looking at their stores across the board. So lots of ways it gets integrated into the daily routine um, and certainly a lot of opportunity for the, for the restaurant tour. Great. Uh, th this next question, knowing how busy owners and operators are, can you tell us about the time commitment that is required to get Jolt up and running? Yeah, great question. Um, so I'll answer that two ways. One is um, we, we can pre-populate, especially for a brand. Um, so the, the amount of time it takes to actually get up and running is, is nominal. Um, you have your checklist and your requirements all preset so you can quickly onboard really same day. Um, but the second way I'd answer that is also on that ROI. Um, so your return on investment with the product, once you start using it, um, and uh, as, as you get more efficient, your establishment becomes more efficient. So if you think of just the time savings involved with doing it through a digital um, um, a digital environment like Jolt, um, you can expect to save, you know, two, three, even four hours a day in payroll costs. So if you look at it from that standpoint, um, not just the time commitment, but also the return on the investment, it's a pretty powerful and compelling uh, story on why this makes a lot of sense for you. Great. If someone was opening up a new restaurant, how can Jolt help me from day one? Uh, it's a good question. Good question. So one so of the one of the, one of the major one of the ways this will help you is really establishing those standards and making sure compliance. Um, having been involved with with hundreds of openings, uh, both personally and professionally, um, it can be a pretty chaotic environment um, and. Uh, one of the things that um, helps with having, you know, like the task management function that we have is it brings uh, clarity and um, uh, continuity to the establishment. So right out of the gate, uh, preset, pre-ready to go, you open uh, day one and, and folks are following the proper process and procedures. That just makes you look professional and also um, helps your brand or your restaurant uh, be successful. So um, that's a, it's a great it's a great tool um, especially for a new opening to to get that consistency out there and uh, uh bob this might be like kind of a follow-up to this question uh, that i think goes really well with your answer is looking at this screen there's a training hub what can you tell me about the training hub yeah that's a really powerful part of of what the product does as well so we have a library where we can store trainings, we can store um, uh, uh, procedures, uh, all sorts of content. So like for instance, you have a new hire. And one of the things I talked about in the displacement of the labor um, is um, onboarding. Um, so if you have pre-established uh, criteria for folks, uh, training videos, checklists for them to follow as part of their onboarding process, 
you can preload that. And then um, when folks come on board, they can go through that process and you can get them up to speed quicker. Um, you can use that for all sorts of things, but that's one of the one of the areas that we see folks using it for today. Great. I think one of the other things I'll mention here, Bob, as well, that I think is great about, about training as well is, is that you can integrate your training and, and resources that you have internally with checklists. And so, you know, if, if someone needs to be reminded on how to carry out a very specific task, you, you can attach these training materials, whether they're photos, videos, uh, documents, anything like that, to a specific checklist item so that uh, an employee can reference that right there on the spot in the app. They don't have to go find a manager or go find help. Uh, it, it acts as a, just a great tool to, to teach people and, and keep them fresh on how different processes should be carried out. So. Yeah, it's a great point, Brandon. And just kind of made me think too, um, one of the use cases that uh, folks use this for as well, which, which was interesting to me, um, is in the kitchen. So recipe, uh, not that we're doing inventory, but recipe and preparation, um, using that for uh, folks as well. Yeah. Okay, this next question is, how much ability do I have to customize Jolt for my business? That, another great question. Um, one of the real powers of the product is that um, it is customizable. So it's not a prepackaged uh, proprietary, this is what you see is what you get. Um, we, we like to start you with some stuff that's set up to make it uh, easy for you to onboard. But once you get it and you're up and running with it, the ability to create your own um, is phenomenal. Um, and we see a lot of customers um, you know, well, I was just down the street um, at a at a one of our customers um, about a month ago, and um, you know they're a Jolt fan, and they're showing me what they've done to it, and um, uh, it's just amazing. Um, their customization are beyond what you know we kind of thought you could do with it, um, and that's a real powerful part of having a, pr a product like Jolt is that you're not locked in. Uh, it's something that can grow with you, and um, it's a really a powerful tool that as your business grows and changes, it can grow and change with you. Yeah, I'll just add a, a flavor to that because uh, this is one of my favorite quotes I heard from an early customer I had the chance of working with. And uh, they said, CJ, uh, with Jolt, you were only limited by your imagination. Mm -hmm. And so I think their experience was you can keep it as simple or you can customize it as much as you want. The option is yours. And that's, I think the beauty of Jolt is you have options to run your business your way. And, and we've tried to facilitate that as, as simply as possible for you. Yeah. I mean, how often do we hear about people who get started because of, you know, a very, very common use case, like, you know, putting your, your opening and closing checklists in Jolt and then, you know, a few weeks into it or a month in the, down the road, we hear back from these customers who have solved these challenging business problems that they've faced for so long by incorporating something from Jolt. And uh, uh, we hear this time and time again. And I, that's, that's one of my favorite parts is, is just being able to uh, con continuously learn the different ways it can be, it can be utilized to solve business challenges. So. Yeah, that's great. Um, looks like we maybe have one more question here that that uh, I think could be we could do a good job answering is with COVID-19 and the current situation going on, how can I know that this is a good idea to do right now? Yeah, that's a that's a great question, and really part of what we talked about right from the beginning. Um, so if we if we think about um, the customer base, your consumer. Um, and some of the steps you need to take to, um, to get them back. Um, I think the key here really is to be proactive and, you know, take pride in, in what you're doing and the steps you're taking. And Jolt can be part of that. We can take that data for you and make it actionable so that you can show it like CJ was showing you with the, with the dashboard. But I think it's a time to, to um, shout from the rooftops, right? Um, this is what we're doing. These are the steps we're taking. And I think consumers are really looking for that. And I think it'll give you a major leg up. And I think if, if you implement it uh, today, um, it'll help you 
uh, reestablish that. Uh, CJ, any thoughts on that? Um, I just uh, was recently talking to someone and they have a philosophy of uh, just start. And uh, I think given the current environment, it's whatever you can do to get things started now, I think will produce great results even in the long term. And so, um, and that's the beauty of Jolt is because uh, we have options for you. You can, you can start with a few things and then that can lead to a bunch of different things down the road. Um, but I would say there's no need to wait um, to do things. It's the best time to start is now. And uh, we definitely just certainly encourage at least starting the conversation if for those interested and uh, we can get things up and running and, and hopefully that, uh, not hopefully, but we're confident that can help you and, and your consumer base. That's great. Well, I do want to take the opportunity to thank everyone for joining today. Um, CJ, thank you. Branding, thanks for um, hosting this for us. And for those folks um, uh, out there, appreciate your time and really looking forward to working with you in the future. Thanks, everyone.